Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yes. Can you uh, your, your question. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Ubaid Khlayel. I am political uh, science student in Hebrew University. My question is for uh, Professor Mu'taz Qafisha. Is can uh, ICC uh, prosecution the Palestinian who make or, or who did the activities against Israel? That's my question. Okay, thank you. Dr. Thank you. Dr. Mu'taz? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm muted. Okay, thank you, Abayda. Abayda, in fact, is one of my human rights uh, students and is one of the good students. Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> the, 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 straight, the straight answer to, to this question is that the ICC has jurisdiction, as uh, Ambassador Ammar uh, yeah, uh, mentioned, that the court well, have yes. jurisdiction uh, over all crimes that be committed on, uh, on the territory yeah. of Palestine, regardless yeah. of who yeah. uh, that, uh, that, that crime. Um, uh, and uh, uh, therefore, uh, but you know, if, if we uh, compare the uh, acts that has been committed by the Palestinians since uh, 2014, uh, 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 the date on uh, or the, the year or, or, uh, from which the court would have uh, jurisdiction, the acts that have been has been committed by the Palestinians are less than one percent than those acts and crimes that have been committed by uh, by the Israelis. Uh, and I think uh, the, the, the answer is yes and no. Yes, in uh, as a matter of uh, principle, and no, in uh, as a matter uh, of uh, fact. Uh, the fact that, as, as we know, the court uh, prosecutes and uh, punishes uh, serious and grave crimes, and uh, the, the uh, potentially violations that have been committed by Palestinians, I uh, in, in general are uh, minor. Uh, acts like if, if we look at the statistics, how many Israelis have been uh, killed uh, since 2014 by uh, by Palestinians? Maybe two, three uh, people. And as we know, the court would not uh, have jurisdiction uh, when there are just few uh, victims. Uh, and most of these, uh, most of the Palestinian acts are uh, could be considered as legitimate uh, acts under international law and uh, under international law relating to the right. Uh, to, uh, uh, to defense and international law relating to the right to self-determination. But I think the, uh, us as, a Palestinian, as Palestinians, we need to prepare uh, to be prepared for uh, such uh, a scenario. Uh, Israel and its supporters might uh, bring to the attention of the court certain uh, acts that have been committed by, by, uh, uh, by the Palestinians. And uh, I think we need to be, be, be prepared. At the institutional level, we need to uh, uphold the question of complementarity. I think we need to set up a, general, a comprehensive uh, uh, in, uh, system relating to uh, the integration of uh, the Roman statute within our uh, uh, legislative, judicial, and institutions in, uh, in, in Palestine. And to be honest, uh, so far, we have not really taken, as Palestinians, uh, uh, or at the official level, we have not been taken um, or integrating the Roman statute within our uh, domestic uh, system, and this is one of the issues uh, or messages can be conveyed to the, our distinguished uh, officials who are with us uh, at this uh, uh, webinar to uh, to consider this uh, this issue. And personally, I wrote a comprehensive article published in the uh, uh, the, the Hague uh, Journal of International Law, uh, indicating what uh, can be done from the Palestinian part in order to uh, comply with the question of complementarity. Uh, at the Palestinian uh, Palestinian level. Thank you. Are you asking question? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I want to respond to <laughs> oh, Professor Mutas. Uh, uh, what regarding uh, the principle of complementarity and and also domestication of uh, domestic law. Uh, this is very important in Rome Statute that. Uh, the commitment of state parties in uh, making or enacting the local laws uh, reflecting uh, uh, Rome statute. We call it domestication of, of uh, uh, international law. So that is a very important requirement that as a state party, you are required to domesticate uh, your laws uh, and, and, and in, in the promotion of uh, Rome statute. This is this is very important 
uh, for 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 those countries who wish to become state parties uh, to the Rome Statute. Now, secondly, as regard to uh, whether uh, non-state parties uh, can be prosecuted or not, uh, this is uh, an issue, a uh, very important issue, because uh, if you remember, the president of uh, uh, Sudan was taken uh, uh, and, and was about to be prosecuted, and there was an issue uh, stating that Sudan is not a state party. But, but there is a provision under, under the uh, Security Council where uh, states has given the mandate to Security Council to start or to, com to command um, uh, the prosecutor office to commence an investigation. So this is possible. So it is, it is not just uh, not being a state party, uh, you are not subjected to Rome Statute. It is possible uh, provided uh, there is intervention by Security Council. So, so, and again, you must remember that Rome Statute is not about state; it is about individual. So, just to add on uh, some of the points made by uh, Professor Mutas and Excellency Ahmad Ijazi. 